Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. Uh, council will be meeting after worship today. I declare a quorum right now. <laughs> <laughs> Other announcements? If not, let us stand and welcome God into our presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. God has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. God's mercy is upon all creation. From generation to generation, praise God. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that from the beginning of time we have failed to understand your call to us. We have acted as though we are gods in our own lives. We have acted or failed to act in ways that have led to injustice and oppression. We have turned away from you and sought other gods, possessions, people, media, and other distractions. Forgive us for all the ways in which we have failed you and our neighbors. Call us back into the abundant life of loving service that you offer us in your holy name. Amen. Beloved of God, hear these words of hope. God who created you in God's image has redeemed you in Christ Jesus and for his sake forgives you for all the ways you have sinned and fallen short. Receive this forgiveness with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. We turn to our gathering hymn. God is here, number 526.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you are our rock and salvation. We rejoice for all that you have done. Thank you for your faithfulness and for hearing the cries of your people. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Our first reading this morning is from 1 Samuel. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to, back to their house in Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, and the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread. But those who are hungry are fat and spoiled. The barren has become, has been born seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversary, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We turn to our gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel for this 21st Sunday after Pentecost is from the Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And back to children for Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Anyone know what this is? The phone, right? Huh? They were talking the phone? No? <laughs> She's always talking on the phone. <laughs> Lydia tells all. <laughs> so, why do you talk on the phone? Call people. Just want to hear their voices, right? What are you talking about? I know what. Boys at school. Right? You don't. Well, we can, we can talk to God just like we talk to our friends. Oh. How do we do that? We pray. Yeah. We can ask God for help too. Think God always answers yes? No, I don't think so either. Let's let's read the story from today. Hannah couldn't have a baby. Her body wouldn't let her. And it made her really sad. So she prayed to God, If you make it so that I can have a baby, I will give that baby to you. And he will be a priest and a prophet for you. And then the impossible happened. Hannah had a baby boy and named him Samuel. She took him to the temple and gave him to the priest. And Eli gave him to the priest Eli to be raised as a servant of God. God, she sang for joy. Your love is amazing. You're, you love those who are poor and hungry, who have no power and who are sad and lonely. And she kept on singing. You take all the, all the people no one cares about, and you make them the most important people. There is no one like you. So if God doesn't always answer yes, what are the possibilities? God could say no. Or God can say, well, maybe, but not yet. One time I prayed for help with a test I was going to have to take. And that time God did say yes. And before I knew it, I had aced that test. But there were other times when I probably should have prayed for help and flunked the test. But God was still there to help me through and help me pass the, te the course. So sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says no, I have something better for you.
Would it be better? Is there something better than plunking a test? Yeah. We all know that, don't we? Sometimes tests are really hard. But God is there, holding your hands and saying, wait, I got something better. I got something better. It may not be that bike I wanted, but something there. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being with us every day and for hearing our prayers and answering when we ask for help. We know the answer may not always be yes, but we trust that you have a better plan for us, no matter what that answer might be. Keep us safe and healthy this week, and we ask it in your name. Amen. There's the box. God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. The journey through our story has so far taken us from creation to human actions which separate us from the Creator. Even God's dramatic rescue from slavery and through the Red Sea isn't enough to convince the chosen people to live in harmony and in close relationship with their God. It seems we humans not only want to be like God, we actually want to be God and fashion the Creator in our own image. The golden calf <clears throat> didn't cause God to ignore God's promises. But there were consequences. One of those consequences was that people wandered in the desert for 40 years before they came to the promised land. And the people that actually were allowed to enter the promised land were the generation that came after the ones who built that camp. But they were finally brought to the promised land, the land that God had promised to Abraham. Well, the next period in our story is perhaps the most bloody era of our story. The promised land was already inhabited. And settling in the land was not an easy task. Each of the 12 tribes was faced with challenges and threats from the neighbors. Time and time again, they turned away from the God who had demonstrated faithfulness. And yet God continued to be faithful to this people and continued to live up to the promises. Well, quite a bit of time has passed between our story last week and the story before us today. Today we have another story in which a couple is barren. For women being unable to bear a child was a matter of shame and disgrace. And once again, God chooses a disgraced woman to carry out God's plan. <coughs> Sarah had laughed at the thought of giving birth in her old age. And today we hear of another woman, Hannah. And Hannah, Hannah cried to the Lord for a son. And then promised to dedicate the son to God's service. If only God would look favorably on her and relieve her of her misery. And when God responded to her pleas, Hannah actually kept her promise. She named him Samuel. And when the child was weaned, she brought him to Eli and gave the child back to the Lord. The song that Hannah sings is an intriguing song. It is one that Mary would echo many generations later. This faithful woman might easily sing of regret for her promise. I mean, what mother wouldn't want to keep, raise, 
and nurture her child. Think about your own mothers or those other strong women in your lives who were your major influences. Could you imagine those mothers willingly giving up their children? Let me share a story of one mother. The woman had been told that she would not be able to carry a child after two unsuccessful pregnancies. Pregnancies that almost claimed her life. She believed the doctors and set about building another career for herself. She worked her way up the ranks in a retail store and finally she became the assistant manager of that very same store. She had a very nice income and a great sense of self-worth. She may not have had children, but she could still be a valuable contributing member of society. She also loved her job. Then one day she wasn't feeling well. <coughs> she even fainted on the floor of the store. She went to the doctor and learned that she had somehow conceived. And at that point, she had two options. She could follow the doctor's orders, quit her job, and struggle to carry the child to term, or she could continue on with her job and simply resign herself to never being a mother. Well, she quit her job that very day. And after the child was born, the manager begged her to come back to work. She said, I didn't have this child for someone else to raise. And she meant it. I think most of us probably know at least one story like this mother's story. I know I have encountered a few other women, well actually a great many women, who were just as committed to being a full-time mother. Well today the world is a little bit different. Women today often don't have a choice. Working outside the home is a necessity. Today we have families who also choose to follow different models of parenting. I have several good friends who elected for the fathers to be the full-time caregivers for their children. Well, mom had the big career. And it actually works. We also have women who love caring for children enough to do it for other mothers and provide that motherly influence. I think of school teachers too, especially in the elementary grades. Teachers become part-time parents. Why? <laughs> because they love the kids. I don't know of many teachers who have become or will ever become wealthy by doing their jobs. We've got one back here nodding her head, yep. <laughs> but here we have Anna. Her song of praise talks of many things, but her major theme is all about how her God lifts up the lowly and brings down the mighty. God gives life to someone who was without hope, without hope of ever being able to take her place in society. God makes the poor rich, rich enough to sit with princes. Our God doesn't only hear the cries of barren women or men who can't produce a son to carry on the family name. Our God is always about lifting up those who are poor, hurting, rejected, or persecuted. Our God is the God who brings down those who would abuse their power. In Mary's words, our God is the God who keeps promises, who fills the hungry with good things, who scatters the proud and lifts up the lowly. Hannah's sacrifice was pretty great. She gave up an only child. 
And there was also a renew, also a reward in store for this woman. The child she gave to God would become a priest and anoint kings. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. For today, it is enough for us to join with Hannah and with Mary and sing praises to the God who even cares enough to lift up you and me. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to our next hymn, Healer of our Every Hill, number 612. Please stand.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation, trusting in God's gracious love and care. For open hearts, we pray. Your faithfulness never fails and never ends. Just as you were faithful to Hannah, you are faithful to us. Thank you for your steadfast word and promises. God, in your mercy. Amen. For creation, we pray, help us to enact policies for the well-being of the earth and to amplify the voices and efforts of environmental activists and advocates around the world. God, in your mercy. Amen. For leaders of all kinds, we pray, kindle love and compassion in all who lead and are responsible for others' work well-being no matter the size or scope of their role. Help us all to work together for good. God, in your mercy. Amen. For all who are in need of your care, we pray, grant peace to those who are in distress and come to the aid of those who need you most. We pray especially for Gerald, Frank, Greg, Terry, Cindy, Cassie, Harry and Judy, Trish, Leanne, Rick, Herb and Greta, Kyler, Patricia, Chris, Ruth, Joe, Lloyd, Danielle, Don, Marissa, Alan, Mike, Gordy, Savannah, Marilyn, Brooke and their families, and the families and friends of Mike Leno and Kai Lindgren. God, in your mercy. Amen. For openness to change, we pray. As autumn continues, open our eyes and hearts to changes in our own lives and help us to know that you are with us no matter what. God, in your mercy. Amen. For all those who have gone before us, we pray. Thank you for all the ways in which they showed your love and cared for others. Help us to do the same. God, in your mercy. Amen. These and all our prayers we lift up to you, O oh God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace. Please be seated and receive our offering. <laughs>
Bless them for the sake of all creation. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. God, who answers prayers, invites you now to the feast of eternal life in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Here is the bread of life and the wine of the covenant, given for the redemption of all creation. Come and receive this foretaste of the feast to come. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Holy God, you have welcomed us to the meal and fed us with the dignity of the table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Turn to our closing hymn, Abide With Me, number 629. <laughs>